what that training will do, it will enhance the officer's ability to recognize uh, uh, these particular types of violations. For example, one of the things the state police look for, uh, besides the obvious mounds uh, <coughs> on the back of the truck that may indicate an overload, is the ballooning of tires, uh, the, the wobbling of uh, rear axles, and uh, and, and then your obvious equipment failures, and, and it teaches them how to uh, a number of other things, and uh, which is beyond my level of expertise at this point because I haven't been to the school myself. Um, but th that'll uh, enable our officers to enforce Chapter 90 laws uh, versus uh, Chapter 90 and Department of Transportation. We, we will not have the authority to enforce the uh, DOT laws. Uh, at, at this particular level of training, and I'm not sure that we'll ever be able to enforce DOT laws, that that will probably likely uh, need the assistance of the state police. Uh, the state police truck teams are deployed on a, a priority and, and on a need-be need basis throughout the state. It was explained to me by Sergeant Romeo uh, that, for example, in the uh, central part of the state, uh, uh, west of Fitchburg uh, and several of the larger cities, they've got some major problems with trucks. And they get them uh, about once a month uh, going out there. So uh, it's, it's not likely we will see uh, the state police truck team in the town of North Reading at the frequency that we would all like to see them there. But perhaps uh, with that specialized training, we'll at least be able to enforce that the uh, Chapter 90 laws uh, more effectively. Uh, the next objective on our action plan is the, uh, it's called Selective Uniform Traffic Patrol. And uh, we would be using regularly scheduled uh, officers on shifts. Uh, this would not be an overtime effort uh, for, for obvious uh, budgetary reasons. Um, and uh, we'll speak to our uh, day sergeants and our early evening sergeants to try to schedule um, some concentrated enforcement, not just in that area, but uh, we have to also look at uh, to ensure that there isn't disparate treatment uh, amongst the other areas that are of town that are impacted by uh, heavy commercial trucking, such as our Lowell Road, uh, Chestnut Street, uh, Route 62, as well as the area you folks are, are concerned about. So we'll try to set up selective enforcement as effectively as we can using our regular, uh, regular scheduled offices. Uh, the caveat to that is, is that uh, sometimes you may see an officer sitting there or a team of officers sitting there for an hour or two. Sometimes you may see them there for five minutes and then they fall off uh, to respond to, to, an, to another incident. Uh, there's another type of patrol called a, de <coughs> a directed dedicated patrol. And once we get our traffic team trained in truck laws, uh, we will take a look at available overtime and schedule these group of officers to target certain areas around town, uh, specifically looking at heavy commercial vehicles and uh, enforcing the chapter uh, 90 laws. And uh, our next area is uh, research. Uh, you know, we want to specifically, uh, Sergeant Romeo suggested this evening uh, that we contact uh, counsel for the Registry of Motor Vehicles to get a legal opinion as to whether, in fact, we can prohibit uh, jake breaking in certain areas of towns. Uh, for those of you that don't understand jake breaking, uh, in addition to their, uh, their power-assisted brakes like we have in our cars, uh, a truck driver off a heavy commercial vehicle can flip a switch on his, uh, on his or her dashboard and that releases the compression in the engine and slows the engine down and that's that rumbling noise as it's blowing out the uh, high <coughs> pressure uh, through the, those, like a pressure cooker. Uh, and and uh, so we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna research that and, and, and uh, so we can do, uh, if, if there's anything we can, we can alleviate the problem through, through uh, that kind of uh, enforcement. Uh, we're also talking about forming a plan about operator education. Uh, I know the town administrator uh, in our brief discussion about this two weeks ago was sending some letters out uh, to the, the big three. 
uh, that you folks identified as causing uh, the majority of problems in and around that area. Uh, but uh, as our traffic team becomes more proficient uh, in what to look for, uh, we may be able to host a class or two with the police department and invite some of these folks to come in uh, so that they, they could become aware of our concerns about uh, truck and commercial safety uh, in, in the town. And then uh, we want to follow up with you folks to find out uh, how we're doing. Uh, if there are still problems, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll try to address those as they come up. Uh, we'd, we would really uh, love to see a, a fully outfitted uh, traffic t uh, truck team. However, uh, it's more than likely cost prohibitive in this economy at this time here. Uh, the state police vehicle, or vehicles that were used, uh, they were outfitted to the tune of about $60,000. Uh, with their tie-ins to the Department of Transportation to the registry of motor vehicles and printing out uh, the necessary documents to seize a vehicle and have a vehicle put, about, put out of operation and, and, and towed from the scene. Uh, but I, I think that we can come down with a scaled-down version of, of uh, what the state police do and perhaps uh, meet <coughs> the needs of, uh, of the town of North Reading and then working with the DPW and, and the results from the TA, uh, maybe we'll have a, a plan that's in place that, that, that'll uh, help mitigate the, these particular problems. I told you that uh, I would give you a breakdown of the initiative that took place on Friday. It uh, ran from 4 a.m. in the morning to uh, 10 a.m. And there were one, two, four, uh, four uh, troopers, uh, two teams, and uh, we had uh, five North Reading officers there in observation and also assisting the troopers with traffic. Uh, there were 11 uh, com large commercial vehicles stopped. Uh, about uh, probably nine of them were stopped in the, uh, in, in the uh, Cedar Street, New Street, Ch uh, Central Chestnut Street area. One they actually had to pursue over Havel Street, stop them down by Pocket Drive and bring them back to where the team was located. Uh, and that was an overloaded truck. Uh, of the 11 trucks, five were placed out of service uh, for 20 or so violations, safety violations. And they called in uh, uh, Cody's uh, towing out of uh, North Andover and had them hauled out of there. Uh, there were 14 driver violations, 72 truck violations, three overweight violations, uh, and the state police issued about almost $3,000 worth of fines uh, to, to those uh, particular drivers. Uh, it should be noted that there, were no, there was no speeding. Uh, none of the trucks were stopped for speeding, uh, and it's not, not that it was probably their lucky day uh, or an anomaly, because I'm sure that they, we're all sure that there are trucks at speed, uh, but there was none observed in that particular time frame uh, that were uh, going over the posted speed limit. And interestingly, uh, with some of the trucks, you know, I've seen some pictures that uh, were taken at, at the scene uh, that were in deplorable condition. There was no excessive noise, uh, which struck me as odd. But again, it was one of those days where uh, the stars didn't line up and we didn't quite get what we were looking for on that particular day. Uh, we will continue our relationship with the state police. Uh, it's nothing but a win-win for us in the town of North Reading. Uh, and we will continue, as we have in the past, uh, work with the DPW. Uh, we have a great partnership in trying to find some, some means of mitigation and along uh, with, with the town administrator. Uh, at this point, if, uh, if anybody has any questions, the board or, or, uh, or the residents of the area, please don't hesitate to ask. I, I thought maybe the next step would be t for the board to get some input from the residents. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, th the, the rules will be raise your hand and through the chair and uh, come up to the podium. Uh, the meeting is being televised. <coughs> Cite your name and address for our uh, Fred recording Vieta, secretary. 8 Cedar Street. Uh, we we want to know if, if the town would at least meet us someplace and maybe put like a 7 to 7 curfew. Is that possible? So we can at least sleep with our windows open? Oh, I don't know if that's Mr. Okay. Romeo. Mr. Oh. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Scott. Yes, uh, Scott Tilton. Joe Vito was 
when the Soviet Union used to be a member of the past, we could not have forced time to strip the roads in the past and offer anyone in the state. That's what Joseph, Joseph was aware of that law as well. Uh, we used to have time restricted roads in town. We couldn't force any of that. could take the science down. All right, and then with all these uh, fines. Mr. Be Mr. Bellacone says some comments. I, I, I think it might be helpful. There's a whole process that's involving enactment of a, a truck exclusion that's not a simple local decision. The town engineer, I think, might be helpful to maybe respond to a number of, of your questions and just give a brief presentation in terms of what's involved in that process if the board would allow it. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it seems like within the four hours that they were there, they racked up $3,000 in fines. And how many infractions? Is it? You said 11? It was, it was uh, um, 11 vehicles stopped. 11? Infractions. So, yeah, I mean, how about the kids that are going to be there at 7 o'clock in the morning waiting for their school bus? No, uh, we understand, you but, know, you know, there, there, there are certain rules. So. There are certain laws that we have to abide by. Why don't we uh, have our town engineer uh, deliver a little report might help answer some of your questions. Huh? The, uh, the, the, the process for a truck exclusion involves approval by Mass DOT. It, it's out of the hands of the town. And Mass DOT requires uh, an engineering report. And within that engineering report, there are, I, I consider, two key components. The first is a, a traffic count. Now, in the petition that was submitted to the town, they are looking for a 12-hour exclusion. Uh, uh, the report would have to contain a traffic count for the 12-hour period that they were looking for the exclusion. Uh, the, the, the second uh, key item in, in a uh, engineering report that would be sent to Mass DOT is um, a map outlining an alternate truck route would have to be provided and um, um, the options if Chestnut Street were limited to uh, passenger vehicles and, and trucks making deliveries would, would either send trucks into Reading and you would need support from the town of Reading to get an exclusion in North Reading, or they'd be uh, redirected towards the intersection of Havel Street and Park down by Rias. The proximity of schools, uh, the number of uh, pedestrians during the day at times, uh, I don't think that is a viable alternative. In fairness to the petitioners, the town, to the best of my knowledge, does not have current traffic counts. Neither does Mass DOT. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe the state police did some traffic counts, uh, but my sense is they didn't. Uh, if they were only out there for six hours, they didn't meet the 12-hour uh, requirement. Uh, Michael, I, I, I just want you to address the, um, there's a threshold or a percentage of traffic that ne needs to be trucks to meet this requirement. So it's not only a traffic count, but the traffic count needs to validate the fact that there are a certain percentage of trucks that travel across the roadway, therefore warrants an exclusion. Hey, can you address that? That's correct. Um, the, the total volume, <coughs> the, the number of <coughs> traffics with a carrying Carrying capacity over two and a half tons has to be between five and eight percent for mass DOT to consider a truck exclusion. Of uh, the entire traffic flow on that road in the given period that the exclusion is requested. That's correct. Is the town aware that the, the spotty port gas tank is running through the town all night long, right through that intersection? I'm not aware of that. Is the fire department here, you know, available to, you know, comment on that? They're not here. The fire department's not here this evening. Well, they're not excluded from driving through there. That's the and issue. If a big 40-foot yeah. gas tank is trying to take a right-hand turn, and you're coming down New Street 
onto Abel Street. Mm -hmm. Kind of dangerous, no? Mm -hmm. Well, let's let's 